Following up on our previous video on the conical pendulum, today we are going to be looking at airplanes and how they bank and their horizontal circular motion. So let's look at the situation that we're trying to model here. We're basically having a plane that's banking through a circle with a constant radius at a level height. This plane is banking at an angle of theta where I'm taking theta as the angle between the tail of the airplane and the horizontal of the horizon. And there are two forces that we must consider acting on the plane in this plane. Remember, those are two different words. And those are the lift force and the weight force. Of course, there are many other forces acting on the plane, such as the upthrust, the weight, and of course, the air resistance. But we are going to assume that the upthrust force is very small, it's negligible. We're going to assume that the thrust is equal to the air resistance force. So therefore, there's no net forward force. And by looking at the lift and the weight forces, we can see that there will be a re resultant force acting on the plane. And if the plane is moving in horizontal circular motion, this resultant force must act horizontally. And we can see some similarities. In fact, it's exactly the same as the conical pendulum. We can basically replace the tension by the lift, and we can basically have the same situation. All right. And the great thing about dealing with airplanes and conical pendulums is that you solve questions about them in exactly the same way by, by resolving vertically and resolving horizontally. So let's start with resolving vertically. We can find the vertical component of the lift and that is L sine theta and we can find the resultant vertical component and that is equal to zero. All right, And therefore L sine theta is equal to the weight. And then we can go on to resolve horizontally we can resolve the horizontal components of each of the forces. So let's start with the horizontal component of the lift, and that is L cos theta newtons, and the horizontal component of the weight, that is zero newtons. And the horizontal component of the resultant force is therefore equal to L cos theta. And this is very important when we're trying to calculate the centripetal force. Since we know that the vertical component of the resultant force is equal to zero, the horizontal component of the resultant force must be the resultant force. And therefore, the horizontal component of the resultant force is the centripetal force. As the centripetal force on particularly any object moving in perfectly circular motion has to be its resultant force. And we also know that the horizontal component of the resultant force is equal to L cos theta, lift cos theta, and that is equal to mv squared over r. That's the equ force equation for centripetal force. And therefore, we can combine those two equations to give us a ratio that we can used to uh, compare the variables, and that's L cos theta is equal to mv squared of r. So to quickly summarize and give some key points, this is a very important point. The lift force must always act 90 degrees to the wings. This is due to the airfoil effect that happens perpendicular to the wings. But other than that, every single other principle of the airplane centripetal acceleration idea is the same as that of the conical pendulum. So thank you for watching my video. Please check out the previous video on the conical pendulum as that includes very important information. And my next video is going to be about ringed conical pendulums. So I'll see you next time.